We're here today at Imperial College at an event celebrating Professor Abdus Salam. And today I'm here joined by his son. Um, tell, if you could just tell us a little bit about him as a person. What did you see in him as a role model? What do you think he did as a, as a professor? Well, I think you've got two aspects of his life. You've got the science, um, which everybody remembers him for, and is what we've talked about today. But what a lot of people perhaps don't focus on as much is a humanitarian work. When he was forced to leave Pakistan in 1955, because there was no academic establishment there, there was no intellectual stimulation for him there, he was forced to leave the country. He left his, his newly born daughter and his wife behind and his beloved parents and his family, and he was the eldest son. That hardship and pain of leaving Pakistan and being forced out to pursue his own academic career left such an indelible mark on him, which ultimately led to the creation of the International Center for Theoretical Physics in 1964, which he fought so hard for. That is now coming up to its 47th anniversary since the first opened. And 100,000 students have passed through that, that uh, uh, institute and have learned from the best brains from the West and taken that knowledge back to their own countries, be it Libya, be it Ghana, be it China, be it Croatia, be it Serbia, you name it, every developing country of the world. And that came from Abdul Salam's inspiration. What greater legacy could he have than, than that? Where do you see his legacy going next in terms of the future and keeping on and holding on to that memory of Professor Abdul Salam? Nigel Calder gave a, a great speech, as Michael Duff talked about, at the, at, at the anniversary of the first death of my father, when the centre was renamed. And he said, Abdul Salam had something, a, a cosmic anger. Not only did he have a very quick, short temper, but he was driven by the absolute injustice of the world with the difference between the developed countries and the developing countries and how the developed countries suppressed the development in the developing countries. That is a challenge we haven't conquered yet and it's still an ignominy on the face of the humanity that we've not been able to deal with and we have to deal with. So that's the continuing work we have to do and that comes from education, it comes from science and technology. Absolutely, thank you very much for joining us.